Carol, we were we had a session a few months ago, and we talked to Jesus. So tell me what what happened after that. Um, well, I was actually more aware of his presence, mm -hmm. and um, you and him were actually more in sync than mm -hmm. I was, <laughs> because um, just before you had sent me an email saying do you want to get back together? I kept having like, it's almost like it was like a little wave. We're, we're going to be going this way. Are you okay with this? Are we going to go this way? And I'm like, okay, but she hasn't contacted me in quite a while. And, and literally it was like the next day or 24 hours, she sent me the email and, and the next sensation feeling I had was, can we remove the peanut gallery? Can we take the uh -huh. mind out? Are you okay with that? And, and you're don't... talking about the conscious mind that interferes. Because yeah, yeah. when I was uh, hypnotized before, literally it felt like, and I've heard this before, it would be like a block information. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a whole segment. And the whole content wasn't my phrasing, wasn't what I would say. Yeah. Um, I have never said, do you know what, in my entire life. <laughs> And he would say that, and I'm like, but I never talk like that. And he did a lot of phrasing and things that I have never done that I don't speak like. And so it was like very different for me. And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm really okay with not having what are you doing in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. And I'm really okay with stepping back so I don't feel my little chipmunks or whatever they are chattering the whole time we're talking. And he's like, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, and I could feel we're going to start pulling you out. And so it literally felt like there was a hand on my head, you know, the weight. Yes. And um, if you could see your, your essence or whatever you makes your breath you, it would start to literally kind of rubber band out like a mist. And as it was going out, I would get numb and numb and numb and you would do it a little more and a little more and I'd always feel are you ready and I'm like okay and 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 it would go out and then it would more and more and it would stay longer like right now my lips are numb <laughs> and uh and I was because you know it was kind of felt like it was a process for him yeah. so then he would gently let me come back in but the odd thing for me was the numbness and he always asked permission are you okay do you want to try it is this okay for you and so he was very gentle about the process of, and the odd thing was it was literally felt like a hand. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> sometimes I would be just sitting there or literally driving and he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, okay. And it, driving actually was because I would focus on the road and I'd feel a hand and then it would just, literally I would get more and more numb and I could feel whatever that little, it's literally like there's a rubber man mist that was extending out that way. Great. And then I had more of a opening yes. in here. And um, he kind of, I would call it kind of like a preliminary, mm -hmm. this is what we're going to be feeling. This is what you're going to be doing. Are you okay with this? And I'm like, yeah, okay. I, I would, I really want me to not be involved involved yeah and we don't have any questions today this is going to be pretty much uh his agenda correct well it's it's all him <laughs> it's all him i have nothing and because he's really been working with me yes so even uh i was like well you know jesus what what do you want and he's like just uh -huh. let it go yes let it go so i've been it's been a thing of process of trusting and a process of allowing and uh, I feeling subtle changes um, the biggest thing I notice is my breath all of a sudden I'll, I'll be sitting there meditating and then I'll be going taking a very deep breath in, like someone else is breathing me ah. mm -hmm. and then I then it just stays up and then it goes up and I'm like Okay, well, that was kind of cool. <laughs> and then sometimes I'll just feel a breath in instead of breathing out. It's literally like he tones me. So 
And that's the word that you used a lot yes. last time, toning you. He, he. Is it a vibrational? It's from what he's showing me. Um, we are all in different vibrational levels and tones, which is yes. why we see many higher selves and mm -hmm. so many interpretation of Jesus because right. we have our own experience of Jesus. Yes. Which is normal. Some yes. people are friends, teachers, saviors. So my experience of Jesus is as a teacher. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I have that whole toning sense ever since I could remember. So I would breathe in and then it would, instead of breathing, I'd breathe in and it would come out. Um, and then it would go really low in my chest. So it would mm -hmm. like vibrate my mm -hmm. chest. Mm -hmm. And more and more as the state came on, instead of breathing out, it would go, I am nothing but I am. I am. And sometimes, oh, okay. And it, I don't know if he was just changing me, yeah. subtly working with me, but I'm like, so it's his show at this point. Okay, good. It's all his show. So uh, we're going to... Do I don't we know where to... I'm going to go. We don't uh, know. He, you know. He did let me know that that it's not going to be just him. There's, There's literally a whole heavenly host. Wonderful. You know? Wonderful. And I, I'm trying to sit there and like the, it's like I can feel the, they're like, it's like showtime. Everybody's <laughs> like getting in their places. And it's like if I at all allow my energy to go out there, it's like they're like, <sighs> you know, the vibration yeah. is very, there's a lot of. Everybody, everybody's been very excited about seeing this again uh, to get more information. So let's get started. Awesome. Okay, we are suggesting. Mm -hmm. Dear Pleiades. All right. So I'd like for you now to imagine yourself encapsulated in a brilliant golden bubble. This golden bubble is filled with the energy that will propel you far and beyond. See yourself in this capsule. And let's begin our journey now, leaving the earth and going at the speed that's required to visit other places. You can see the stars, see the galaxies beyond, and you can feel yourself floating within this beautiful golden bubble. Feel the golden light penetrating through your body. <clears throat> Feel it going into every cell of your body as you transform into the body that you need to visit the Pleiades. Imagine now as your body begins to transform into light body. Using this golden light to take you further and further. You can imagine those stars in the distance. Perhaps you get a glimpse of other travelers alongside of you, all heading into the same place for a special gathering. In this gathering are those that you love so much and who love you. And they are there to give you a message today. Imagine yourself now beginning to see the constellation and those planets that you know so well. Thank you. It's so different. Mm -hmm. Tell me what this place looks like. It's Fine. 
vibrational mm-hmm. Tony. Vibrational Tony? S1. Mm-hmm. The planet tones. Beans tone. Mm-hmm. The air itself tones as one. And there are many beings that belong and do not belong here. What is this gathering about today? They wish to be part of the channeling. There are beings I do not recognize, tall, white, gray, so many kinds, so many. Who am I speaking with right now? I am at the base of the entity spirit that walks the earth. We come from source to our base planet and then we expand out to Others, this is higher self. It is the base we channel from source to higher self to earth like a river. It is infinite. What would you like to channel today? What is the reason why you brought this woman here today? We are waiting for Jesus Mm -hmm. and his gang. (laughs) I hear there are many coming. Yes. Standing room only. He wants to walk down the stairway to heaven. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> what does this stairway look like? It's up in the sky. Mm-hmm. And it's like a opening. And he's walking down the stairway. Mm-hmm. He's got such a sense of He's not wearing a top hat and a cane, is he? No. (laughs) He's so funny. What's he showing himself as? He is all and many. When you look, you see the earth spirit, but you also see the many forms that he also visits in Mm. for he is more than just a earth spirit Mm. he is a universal spirit so what forms does he take how do we recognize him in other places in this world he is purple Mm. mist but recognizable This group, there are many groups in this planet, but the group that this self belongs to is of the purple vibration. Hmm. And so it makes sense for Jesus to visit in a purple body form. Mm -hmm. What other forms does he take? He visits in 
white orbs. Hmm. He changes. He says, centurions, he changes his form. The centurions are important helpers, and so he changes his essence outside so that he can vibrational communicate. He says, your group is from the centurions channeling down. Hmm. Your group meaning who? You. Me. You hmm. are a centurion. I'm not saying it right. Centurion. Mm-hmm. Octurian. 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 So numb. Mm-hmm. He is here. Thank you very much for being here. Wouldn't miss it. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this a long time. So much in balance, Mm -hmm. but it is the swing of the pendulum. Mm -hmm. My speech will shift as I adjust. Thank you. Their pendulum is far from swinging. The imbalance will continue, but know that the darkness exists to accentuate the light. Just as we expand from the source, the yin and yang, the going back within to regain the source. So is the darkness part of the yin and yang of the light? The darkness is part of the experience. But remember just as a graduation this is such a ceremony. Um, The good part is some people go to the graduation, they go there, they party, they have a really good time. Some people go just to change the tassel from one side to another. Some people don't even show up for the graduation. This is the shift. Hmm. It's a literal graduation. It is what you choose. It is what you put into it, but it is part of our evolvement. The good thing is, it's all your choice. You can, for your graduation, you can expand into visiting your college, checking your college out, as in the New Earth. Mm-hmm. going there, visiting there, experiencing there within your sleep or within your meditation. So when you do graduate, it is more like a place you are already familiar with. Mm-hmm. And even in itself, the new earth is a variance of vibrational experience. Mm-hmm. Just as some people graduate and choose to go to a technical school and go and check it out and visit it and have that experience. When they graduate, they already have experience of that school they are going to, and so they will continue onward. Some people are not interested in the graduation. It is all good. They may not even show up 
<laughs> if you will, mm -hmm. for the evolution, the changes of the new earth. This is all in your choice. It is all in your experience. You can have your graduation, your change, your vibration raise, your not vibration raise. The new earth, the new shift, the evolution is what you want it to be. Um, the new masters, the masters that come in, the new energies that are coming in, let's say they are like a car that you come in, you come in fully loaded. You come in with your full energy, you come in with your full vibration, and you are in a full remembrance. The waves that have come before have come in, let's say, not in full loaded motion, because it would be like bringing in a green pre-car to a small little town where there's no road to drive in. So the first waves of evolution of beings, of shifting beings, have a different transportational mode, have a different vibrational energy, have a different level of experience that they bring to the planet. And so because they are the ground workers, they have a more of a tank vehicle mm -hmm. uh, because it's a rough terrain, because they are beginning, because they are bringing forth the energy that is just being settled. And as the next wave in, let's say they can bring a more of a vehicle that can do more, that can go on more roads, that has more of a energy shifting potential. And so since we are in the shift, we're able to bring more of a energy shifting vehicles, vibration, beings that are more aware, that remember more, that are more able to not just go on a small town road, but are able to <sighs> baseline tank newer people bringing in higher vibration and the fully remembering, the veil lifting, the people that can really bring in, anchor in all the way down. So what we're looking in is the shifting from something that can only go in a very rough terrain, the new waves, the first waves, to being able to shift higher and higher and higher to a new higher remembering. And that is the key. We are remembering and the more that you give, the more that you meditate, the more that you shift, give forth, transform your energy. The more that the shift into the new earth, the more that the evolution, the more that the revolution is more of a wave coming onto the beach rather than a hurricane violently hitting the beach and transforming and knocking down all the buildings. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. We want a gentle transformation. We would like it to be smooth. We would like it to be easy. We would like the vibrational shift to just be the next wave that rolls onto the beach. That is what we're looking for. Now, remember the, the shifting, the unbalance mm -hmm. is what it is. Th we are really wanting to tell you not to fear. And to once again, the gifts that we give you, and I'm going to use a term from my travels. Mm -hmm. In this daily life, you have service, satsang, and meditation. This is from over across the world. Service, satsang, meditation. Every way incorporating this into your existence. Meditation. What we are really looking for is 
for you to have the meditation be as a routine so that if you do get unbalanced, if you do have the, see the unbalance that's going on, and it's going to get worse. So when you do see the imbalance and you're feeling the earthquake, what we're trying to do is get you that meditation so that when you see the unbalance as it comes and the ground shaking, it's not going to shake for you. You can immediately <sighs> balance. Mm -hmm. Balance. Do the meditation. That's why you're hearing it over and over so that when the shifting comes, when the imbalance comes, you don't join in. You've got the meditation. You've got the wave that you can just shift into a lower gear, higher gear. Mm -hmm. Ride the wave. Service satsang meditation. Satsang, this is as easy as opening the door, metaphor here, mm -hmm. with a smile. You see it. People stop, they open the door for you, and they smile. Service can be as easy as opening that door and smiling. That is such a simple service. But yet, you are literally opening the door. You are literally opening your smile. That light, that potential, it seems like a really small thing. But service is a very small thing. Service is what you do. Mm -hmm. You are doing service. It is a giving of light. It is a opening up doors. It is a gradually opening up the shift. And I am really being simple. Opening up the door, giving someone a smile is a gift, mm. is a light. The third thing, satsang. Satsang is speaking your truth that you have experienced. And what we're saying is satsang comes from the heart. It's a vibrational resonance that comes from the heart. Now, what we can say that you are on this earth as a spirit experiencing human. Mm -hmm. You can say this is a training ground. You can say this is a school. You can say this is your first time here and you're learning. Your satsang is your heart speaking. When your ego speaks, when your mind speaks, your giving a different vibrational energy. You are bringing a vibrational energy. You are giving you are giving forth that person a different vibrational energy. Mm -hmm. When you speak from the heart, take that moment. It's just like opening the door. Check in with your heart. If you come and you speak from this heart vibration, speaking from that love. And you do need to incorporate your meditation to access this. You do need to incorporate service to reach us easier. Your satsang is your heart speaking from that love point, from that deep part of you that loves. The more that you give service, genuine service, the more that you reach inside yourself to touch your source, the easier it is to come from that part to speak of your love. And this time, let me tell you when you're going to see the unbalance when you're going to see or feel the hurricane hitting people, mm -hmm. maintain that heart connection. Satsang is your heart speaking. Even if it's just smiling at someone, it's really a joy to meet you. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you. The heart 
has the language. Just as the singers are in the background, my background singers, <laughs> they're literally in the background. Mm -hmm. um, they're saying a real good way, and they're giving this through the heart to help to access the satsang, the heart song, is singing. Hmm. And there are many songs that access positive heart song, positive vibration. Say you're driving and Denver's back there. He likes his songs. He's like, you know, you, you just like turn on sunshine, mm -hmm. you know, and tune into that heart vibration. You have your own songs. You have your own heart vibrations that touch you. Mm -hmm. um, and this being's not going to be happy, but we're going to go there, you know. Denver. And his song is, you know, sunshine, you know, sunshine on my shoulder makes me happy. Sunshine in my eyes can make me cry. You feel that. Go ahead and sing. This being doesn't sing. We don't care. We're throwing it out there. Go ahead and touch that heart. Sing. We don't care if you like DMX and you do the, you know, the little DMX. He's got a whole bunch of prayer in front of his songs. He's like, you know, bring the dogs out. You know, sing it. Feel the vibration. Feel the heart. Feel the passion, the energy that we bring forth. You know, let the dogs out. <laughs> You know, and, and he's actually going, rrr, rrr. And, and it's like, you know, it's all good. Let the dogs out. We're all good. Denver's good. DMX is good, too. You got to touch your heart. Rock it on. Feel it. <laughs> you know, we got all the heart here. Bring out the vibration that sings to your heart. And you know what? Let it out. So you don't sing. Let it out. You got to let the passion out. You got to let it out. You got to, I don't care where you are. Don't have to be in the shower. Roll your window down. You could be 60 years old and still go, let the dogs out. Whew. It's all good. Jesus is laughing. It's all right. So, what we're coming from. I uh, thank you. I appreciate that wrapping in there. But what we're doing is, is what the singers are bringing forth is go ahead, hit that vibration. Singing, when you got that stuff going on out there, you go ahead and source tones through your singing. A lot of people are afraid to get out there and bring that joy, feel that vibration, you know? It's really lightning. It's a good way to go down that courier to find that heart vibration. You know, and what going forward, find more ways to vibrate, find more ways to raise your vibration. And let me tell you, all you got to do is ask. If you want to rap, he's going to be there. If you want to do the Rocky Mountain High, Denver's going to be there. But they're both saying, you know what, we'll come there. You just got to ask, you know. And the angels, they're saying, okay, at this point in time, there's going to be people that need to release and heal. When you get in bad situations, there are actually healing angels. Archangel Michael is like, the angels are going to flow more into healing and releasing. What the next level is, is as we are coming onto this planet, as we are coming forth more into the heart, we are willing to work with you. And this is a healing and releasing. Now what we're telling you is if you want to heal and release and you're holding on really tight, it is hard for us to help you release. Mm -hmm. It is a time of angelic releasing. We are here to
to release the dis-ease. We are release the discomfort, but we cannot help you release and heal. As you tighten, meditate, tone, sing, and when you're ready, we don't care if you're in the shower. We don't care where you are. You know, sometimes we feel you all have eaten something bad, and you're like, oh Lord, help me. Start, heal, and release. Release and heal. We are coming in. We are literally legions of angels coming in. This is a time of healing and releasing. Release first. Heal. Allow the releasing to happen. Some of you are going to vibrate. Some of you are going to have a little stomach disorder as the releasing happens. It's okay. Drink more water. Allow the vibrational releasing to happen. And I'm, we're going to put it out there. Sometime it's going to happen in the middle of the night because that's the time when you allow us to talk, to communicate, to touch you. So, three o'clock, one, 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 we're going to flow and release. It's okay. Do not freak you out because we're there to release. And if you heal it, say, Archangel Michael, I know you're working with me. Metronon, I know you got my back. I am allowing you to release and heal. If you want to think of it as evolution, if you want to think of it as a revolution, however you feel comfortable, this next phrase of when the unbalance is going on, we are going to be working with the light workers. If you're willing to release and heal, and she has to go to the bathroom because we've been saying it to her. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to touch your shoulder, and in a moment you can open your eyes, and we'll resume when you come back. Eyes open. Wow. Why? <laughs> Wow. Allow yourself to go back in that same exact connection. Do you have the little white stones? Mm-hmm. They want me to use those. All right. Oh, boy. All right, here I go. Mm-hmm. So, we weren't kidding. That was quite a release. It is a vibrational acceptance of release and heal. It's actually giving us permission to go in and work in your body and just let stuff go. Once again, this isn't a fear thing. It's a healing thing. We're trying to work with all of your vibrations, your energy cells, your body cells. And the term release and heal is very powerful if you're willing to work with it. <clears throat> We're going to go to another level now. After you release and heal, or as you're releasing and healing. Mm -hmm. okay. I release everything that I do not want and I do not need to make room for my highest self to shine.
I release what I do not want and I do not need to make way for my highest self to shine. The words are not exact. The intention is to acknowledge to your body that you are not only letting go of what you don't need, but you are, in addition, bringing forth light to fill it, such as when you release entities Mm -hmm. and you release them, you immediately fill that space with light, Mm -hmm. with high energy. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying in this is part of the release. As you're releasing, as you are letting go, please remember as you are letting go of what you do not want and you do not need in your life, you are filling that space with the higher self of love, the higher self of vibration. Whatever you want to use, but just like Alba does when she moves entities, immediately fill that with light, immediately fill that with love. Mm-hmm. Because it's part of the process. Now, it's okay to know that the evolution, the change is happening in your body. You will either, as you release, you will find yourself not craving things, releasing the need for some things. Allow your body to change in its own time. You know, if, if you're a meat and potatoes kind of guy, it's going to take a little bit for your body to gradually change. It's okay. We're not asking you to go from meat and potatoes to breatharians. <laughs> We're not going to ask you to do that. All we are is asking you to do just things every day to maintain your vibration, to release what you don't need. We really want the best for you, and we're here to work with you. But once again, we have to ask, and a lot you have to ask, and most of this happens when you're asleep, and your higher self or your higher consciousness is ready to get going, is ready to take that trip across the desert. And we're bringing up the the desert, the night of the desert, walking through the night of the desert, Mm -hmm. the long night, dark night. (sighs) What's the significance of that? You hear it more and more about the long night, walking through the desert, the, the, the isolation, the dark night of the self. I'm going to resort to one of my stories. Thank you. Say we're all we're all in line at the beginning of the desert. Mm-hmm. Some people choose to walk with just khakis mm-hmm. and sandals. Mm-hmm. Some people have little skidoos they're going to go across in. We all come to this earth. Mm-hmm knowing that if we're going to evolve, there's going to be a dark night of the soul. Because the yin and yang work together, we face our own, just like you hear in the stories, when I went out and I, and I went into the garden and I faced my, they say, my dark night, my inner demons. You know what? I was out there chilling in meditation. Every day of my life that I was on earth, I faced the good, I faced the bad, I faced high vibrations, I faced low vibrations, I faced people that loved me, people that expected me to save them, and people that just loved being around me. It's the everyday life that brings you the day, that brings you the night. It's the everyday life that you really feel the darkness of the soul that you look out and you go, oh my Lord, what is going on? It is a journey through the desert. We all have different preparations to make the journey. 
You can make it as hard on yourself going through the dark night of the soul or as easy night. Now we're going to tell you those monks and the Dalai Lama, they got it made. They came with a Lincoln Continental and they're just going to cruise through that desert, you know, Mm -hmm. but the rest of us that have the daily drama and trauma and negativity, we're going to go through different various night of the soul. And once again, my backup angels and everybody in back of me make your sanctuary part of who you are. It's going to swing even farther guys. Make your sanctuary within yourself so strong that when it keeps feeling unbalanced, you take that breath. You release that vibration. You're in that car. You breathe in. You find that God space. You release it. You don't have to be in a meditative space to find your source, to find your satsang, to find your service. I don't want anybody freaking out out there. You're not alone. Even though you think you're walking through the desert in the dark night, that famous poem when you're walking on the beach and you only see one set of footprints and you think you're walking by yourself and we're really carrying you, guys, we got you. We never leave you alone. We can't come and assist without your help. But we want to tell you you're not alone. Whether you want a singer to help you with vibrational toning in the car, to find inspirational lyrics. Edgar Casey's out there. He's more than willing to help you settle and find your space. We have Sylvie Brown. She's out there. She's more than willing to work with you. We have Mother Teresa. We have the infant variety of helpers on the other side that we are there to work whatever you need we got gotcha. you you want albert einstein to help you feel more comfortable with quantum physics he's there just let us know what your intention is what your positive from a vibration is and we're going to say it right now if you put your hand in that fire looking for the power of the fire, you're going to get your hands burnt. There's darkness, there's light. You can fall into the darkness and be there. We don't want you going in there, but the yin and yang is the balance of life. People are going to go into the darkness. They're going to fall into the fire, but we don't leave them alone. They can go and think they've burned themselves to nothing. That's nothing for us. We can go We can get you. We can make you light. Remember the fire has light in it besides darkness. You can burn yourself by throwing yourself into the fire, but we're still going to bring the light. You can think you're going to go into the dark depths, or you think your friends are going there. You can't go anywhere where you call, you feel, you need us, you reach out for us. We are always there and know that for your friends and know that for people that are out there that you think are just in the middle of darkness there's nowhere you can go that the light can't shine yin and yang the light is always within the darkness don't be afraid we can go no matter where you are we can go anywhere Because love is everywhere. Love is at the base of everywhere. Different vibrations are here. Different lights here. Different darkness is here. If you feel afraid, call your angels. Calm your breathing. There's going to be more unbalance. But it's going to be okay. The pendulum swinging but it's going to swing back. Don't be afraid. Call us. You're not alone. 
And for the people, and I'm hearing this more and more, that don't want to be here, that are afraid of being here, that feel like they've come here to help, and they feel like they're so far away, allow your breath to find its home source. So many people come to help, to heal, to teach. In your meditation, your source comes from the source. You come from the source. Let's do basics. The source is all. The source is a light. The source is a love. The source is where we all are coming from. That expands out to your home base. No matter what race, no matter where you came from, your home base, like you're climbing a mountain, your home base is your planet you came from, where you decided to volunteer, where your essence is, where your, let's say your home base climbing a mountain. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're right there. Your source is a river that is infinite. When you're at that home base, you turn around, you pull in as much of that source as you need. You are actually have that fire hose of horse, a source that never ends, that is continual. So when you decide to come here and you expand yourself, your base planet, you're going up the mountain, you're going to go travel, you're going to go expand, you're going to go help, you're going to literally climb the mountain, not knowing how rocky it's going to be, not knowing if you're going to have an avalanche, but you're going to climb that mountain. No matter what planet you come from, you have your home base that is directly connected to the source. So when you leave your home base and you come here, you decide how much of your vibration, which is why when you see the Dalai Lama, he has, or when I came, you come fully, completely connected so that when you need your source, you need your vibration, you literally are fully connected. Now, Everyone decides when you're at your home base, when you're climbing your mountain, how much of your source, how much of your vibration, how much of your home are you going to bring with you when you climb that mountain? That's a personal decision that you, your guides, your teachers, your essence, your spirit decides before you come here to this earth. That's why you see so many people deciding. That's why you have the meetings. That's why you have the councils. You decide what you need, how much of your vibration you're going to come. And yes, there are people that bring a great deal of vibration, a strong connection, a whole bunch of their source here. There's some people that aren't sure they want to come here, so they don't bring a whole bunch. Mm. You know, they're like... They're bringing a tricycle, you know, when others are bringing as much as they can, you know, but if you haven't been here before, you're not sure what you want to come back and, you know, you don't know what you want, what you need. And that's why you have your guides and teachers and councils that consult with you when you come here before you leave your base planet. And sometimes you get here and it's like, what the heck was I thinking? Seriously, why did I come here? But you came here to expand your source, to expand who you are, to help. But you feel like you're out in the middle of the desert. What the heck are you doing? Why don't, why didn't you bring a connection? But remember, your home base is constantly connected. Your higher self is constantly connected to that source. You are part of that source, even if sometimes you feel like, like Elba says, there's a small light spark inside of you. That's why you hear her say, do that meditation, connect to that source. That source, and you can ask, you know, and we're going to say this. When you come here, you come here for a lesson. You come here for learning. You come here for healing. You come here for so many different things that you may bring a lot, you may bring a little, so it doesn't hurt to ask. And if you come here and you do a meditation and you do a trance, ask, can I please have more of a download? Can I please have more of a connection to my hair self? I would like more 
direct download from my home base. I'm up here on the mountain and I really want my home base to send me some more supplies. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. And you don't know, and depending, and we're gonna be flat out honest, depending on what your lesson is, depending on what you came here to do, you can either get a full download, help, assistance, or if you really came here to learn, to experience the desert, to experience the 40 days and the 40 nights on the desert, do the whole Moses trip, you know, because Moses went there to learn about the core, the essence, without anything, just the basics. Some people came here with the lesson to learn the basics. Now, if that's your lesson, if that's your learning, if that's what you came here for, the council is going to say, we can only give you so much survival because this is what your lesson is. This is what you choose. Of course, they're going to try and give you more. Mm-hmm. You know, but everyone has different lessons. Everyone has different learnings. But I'm going to just suggest to you, at night in your vibrations or when you come here, please ask for your counsel, your higher self, your teachers. Can I please have more source? Can you send me some more pl- supplies? Can my home base, can my home star, can my home wind, can my home base please send me some more supplies? Because there's that yearning. You know, I'm not at home anymore. I'm homesick. I miss it. I miss my vibration. I miss my home tone. I miss everything. Because you only brought what you and your council felt you needed for this journey. But there is no reason that you can't say, can I please have more supplies from home? Can I please have more help from home? And if you're granted that, because it's, it's, you know, it's not your lesson to walk through the desert in sandals, do the 40 days and 40 nights. If that's okay, home base will just ship you that out. And as we're going through the evolution, as we're going through the shift, as we're going through the transformation, feel free. Can I please have more download for my home? Home, can you send me a postcard? Home, can you send me supplies? Home base, I need some help here. Allow, open yourself to that home sending you vibration, to that home sending you some more source, because it comes from source to your home base, wherever it is, and you're an extension of that source, your extension of the home base. You're climbing up the mountain. We don't know where you are on the mountain, but ask for an extension of your home vibration that will help with the homesickness, that will help with the home loneliness, that will help from being so far away because every home base has its vibration, has its signal, has its vibrational signal. And unless you're here to walk in the sandals, you can get supplies from home base. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put that out there. Use it in your meditation. Use it in your prayers. Use it in your daily intention. Please open me up. Remove some of my negativity, whatever needs to go, so that I have more room for my home-based vibration, for my home essence, for my home to fill me up, so that I feel more connected to my home and I don't feel like such a stranger in my strange land. Get a care package from home. It's okay. We're, we're getting a clearance from the council mm-hmm. that it's time. Can you tell me a little bit about the council? Because it seems to me that sometimes when we do these regressions and meet with the council, it seems almost like the council is forcing the people to come here. That's not their choice. They come here almost like, I don't want to do this, and the council's like, you're going, you're doing this. Can you explain a little bit about that? Well, that's really funny. Um, 
Okay, let's think of the council as the most loving parents that love you forever and ever and they love eternal, it's never ending. And some people come to earth and they're really excited because they know it's going to be okay. And the, and the council puts their hands and kisses their head and say, I love you, you're going to have a great tip, trip, enjoy summer camp. And um, some people have lessons that it's time for them to learn. And the council's like, I know you're going to think we're sending you to your room without TV and Wi-Fi <laughs> and without your cell phone. And we really love you. And we know you think you're punishing us. You know, you're being punished. And you're going to feel that way. And the vibration is going to feel that way. And we feel like you're going to, like, we're kicking you out of your home. And you're, like, being sent to the corner. Or you're being sent to the room when you're shutting the door. And you have no technology or Wi-Fi. How could we send you to a room without the TV? Where is my cell phone? You know, it's really hilarious. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes you really don't want to learn your lesson. And you know it's something you really don't feel like doing, but the council does not wish you any ill will. They don't want to send you to your room as punishment. As you've heard, this is all a play. This is all a stage. Sometimes it's really fun to come and play the kings and the queens and, and the good guys and the guys in the white hat. And uh, sometimes it's really fun to play the, the priest and the priestesses and, and, and the movie stars. That's really cool. And sometimes it's really wonderful to go and be, you know, part of a tribe and have that wonderful bonding experience of a family. But the yin and yang of what is part of this planet is that sometimes you play the guy in the white hat and sometimes you play the guy that comes in and robs the, plant, the bank and takes everybody's money and everybody's been saving that money and now they have to, and he actually is takes all their money that everybody's been saving up and everybody hates a bad guy because now everybody's got to start all over again on a completely different plane and everybody's got to learn a bunch of lessons they don't want to and they really don't like this bad guy and so they go out and they try and kill him. Mm -hmm. So the bad guy comes back and he's like, why did you make me do that? I really didn't like that. So the council sends us on good white cowboy hat things and sends us on bad cowboy hat things. And when we have the other side, say the soldier that goes out and he fights a war and the person's really peaceful and they don't want to go out and fight war and they, they go into a family that's been wars, warriors for generation and he goes out and fight wars and he does it as part as, as his kingdom and his and his generation and as part of honor and heritage and he really doesn't want to go out and fight and he thinks that's a horrible thing to be in that place there's lessons in the light and there's lessons in the dark and you may see as a spirit experiencing this that it's not something you want to do and you really don't like the council kicking your little behind out to a place where you don't want to be but every lesson like being in school you may hate math you may hate science but every lesson in that school on this earth is there to expand you, to learn. And if you want to see it as you are suffering so that the many and the many and the many do not, you go down a path of darkness and fear and things you don't want to experience so so many others don't have to. So if you want to see it as you are carrying a cross, you are suffering, you are in the darkness, but uh, you are doing it so the many and the many do not have to suffer. You are doing service to all of mankind 
in a way that you have no idea. So even though you may feel like you're suffering or you have a hard life, you are doing a high service. And as I said, you are suffering so many and many and many do not have to go there. And when you come back, your light is brighter. Your expansion is more. And you, in your service and in your giving and in your light, have elevated your spirit, have elevated your knowledge, have expanded the self, the I am. Can I ask you something? Because you just hit a nerve with me. Um, suffering for others. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> what does that exactly mean? Because that doesn't feel comfortable. Okay. When you say, he died on the cross for me, well, we that didn't. doesn't sound something that uh, resonates with me. Right. That's well, what first I of all, I didn't die on the cross. <laughs> People left me up there, you know, and I'm not up there. I didn't stay up there. I went away. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really suffer for anybody. Mm -hmm. Let's go for an everyday thing. Let's take a mother mm -hmm. that's on her own. Yes. And she works all the time. And she comes home and she cleans and she cooks. And some of her kids may not appreciate it. And some of her kids may see how she suffers and how she works. And she gives her life, her hard work. And she cares and she loves. But let's be honest, it's suffering to work 12 hours a day and come home and care and clean. And that is the essence of suffering. You are giving a hard life where there's little or no pain, but you are giving it to others. You are giving it so your children have food and have clothing. So I'm not saying that you die for other people. Mm -hmm. I am saying that, and you see it, parents that suffer tremendously to give so that their kids see that mm -hmm. and they learn and they become more than their parents. They see how much their parents suffer for them and give and literally give their life. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not talking about go out and killing yourself for somebody else. I am doing the giving of your energy. And for some people, it is suffering. And it is true suffering. Mm -hmm. There are so many people in this life that are truly suffering. And they are literally giving their life and their energy to make it better for their kids or the people around them. Mother Teresa mm -hmm. had nothing. And you could say she suffered her entire life with nothing, but she would say no. Mm -hmm. She gave off her life to make it better for children and people that had nothing. So for her, it was not suffering. You could say Joan of Arc suffered, but she did not suffer. She felt that she was giving in a way that elevated, that made her more than who she is. Mm -hmm. So once again, we get into the different vibrational frequencies of are you suffering and just seeing the suffering? Or are you suffering and knowing that what you are giving is giving forth positive? There, and this is tricky because there are so many vibrational elements around mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. You can suffer and live in the suffering and not be aware that what you are doing is giving such a gift to around you. And there are those that are just straight giving mm -hmm. and they don't know that they are giving. Mm -hmm. And there are some mothers that literally give fathers. Mm -hmm. There are children that give their life to take care of their parents. Yes. And you can either say they give it in love and you see that they shine through their giving and their suffering. Or you can see that they are literally doing it, but they are suffering. Is that clarifying it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So I'm not saying suffering, give your life and be in pain. Okay. I am saying there are people in this life that literally give everything for the people around them. Mm -hmm. Men, women, uh, people over in other countries. 
and Mother Teresa is right here. And she's like, she did not suffer. She prayed and gave praise. Mm -hmm. She prayed and gave praise every day. She loved and gave love every day. Mm -hmm. And it was an honor. It was a joy. And she prayed through every day. And she did it in love. So it is a vibrational choice. Mm -hmm. It is always a vibrational choice. And we're not taking away from the people who suffer and don't know what light they give. We're not taking away from the hardworking mothers and fathers and sons and daughters that give everything all the time and don't know what light they're giving out. But they're suffering. They are. But it's basically the vibration you're giving. Yes. So you can you can have a, a really you can you can be working really really late at night, um, but not really um, like resenting it. You you're enjoying what you're doing. You're giving of service to others, and that's the vibration that you need to tune into, isn't it? Right, as in what you do. <laughs> you are working really hard, and you're booked for years you are literally having to put your energy out there nonstop yes. all the time now you could some people could see what you're doing and it would just be like you're giving everything out all the time but you are doing it in a sense of giving but just receiving so much more mm -hmm. so it is your vibration of where you are you are busy all the time. So it's your vibration of how you are choosing to exist in a constantly busy, constantly busy. Mm -hmm. So you are exactly right. That's where we are. That's where you are. That's where you choose to be. Mm -hmm. Well, I get to go to the beach every once in a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I give myself some time off sometimes. So, and think of all the nurses yes. that work really long shifts. Mm -hmm. And there are nurses that are just like full of joy for what they do. They literally love healing people. Mm -hmm. Firemen that work for days and days on end. And they love helping and rescuing people. Mm -hmm. All the people that are, are out there fighting, the, the so many people that give their lives. But they do it in gratitude. And they do it in honor. So suffering doesn't have to be suffering. Can you talk about those people who are suffering with diseases, illnesses, uh, things like that, that want relief? And many contact me, uh, think, hoping that uh, we'll release some entities that may be causing some of these issues. Can you talk about that? Right. Remember? Okay, first of all, we want to establish that some people come to understand pain. They come to experience that pain. Say someone comes, Christopher Reeves. Mm -hmm. Let's just say, because he's a wonderful example, that he came as a very strong person. Let's say his choice was to go from being a strong Superman to a person literally completely handicapped mm -hmm. and his choice and his and he wonderfully went through it Michael J Fox people who had everything and lost it through a disease now we don't know that their contract was an, a gift to others so what you see is a wonderfully giving loving person that chose to take on this disease, to take on this pain, to brighten and to teach everyone around them. Not everyone who has disease or has an affliction is something that in that moment can be removed. Mm -hmm. Because we will always maintain that any dis-ease or affliction can be removed. Mm -hmm. Because you can change everything at the cellular level. But there are people that come and in their highest loving self 
choose to have a dis-ease in their body and choose to have an affliction because it is a lesson for them and it is a lesson for the people around them to allow them to give, to allow them to help. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, Michael J. Fox and uh, is, is, is a wonderful example of a loving, kind, gentle spirit that took on an affliction with grace and love. So while at any moment you can deal with the affliction, there is a time that you contracted to learn from it, to allow people to help you, to to experience that. Because all of our lives we didn't come here in hunky-dory character. Mm-hmm. We didn't always come here in full health. There are a lot of times that we came that we had an early death. There are a lot of times that we came that in the early times we had polio. There were a lot of times that we came and we were in a wheelchair and we were a shining example. There are times and contracts that we choose to learn from the disease and to allow everyone around us to help and learn with the disease. Now, when the time is ready, and it's only between you and your guides and the teachers, and when your contract is over for you to evolve, and you've seen that happen also, there are people that have devastating diseases that come out on the other side. There are people that you think are never going to get better, that you think they're going to pass, and that's the end. Mm -hmm. And they come back, and they are even better. It is part of who we are, what we bring, what we need to experience. And while for some people it may be time to shed the dis-ease, for some people within their guides and teachers and contracts. We don't know what they contracted in for. We don't know who's actually helping them and changing their life Mm. because of that dis-ease. There are so many people that are inspirational Mm. in their disease. Mm. There are so many people that teach in their disease. There are so many people that are giving of a a loving high vibration that comes through that body disease or affliction because that essence is more than the disease of the body and everyone has different types of disease and this is a contract at different types of their body mm-hmm. of their time some people contract to have a disease or a dysfunction in their body when they come in so that they learn that in their life there are some people that contract to have a teenage accident or disablement so they have that youth and they this experience of disablement and there are some people that choose to have dementia or a older disease in that elder part of the period. Almost everyone has a body not working in perfection at some point in their life so they can experience both the wellness and the part of the disease of the body. Whether and that's part of your contract, and you and it is whether it's in the beginning, in the middle, or at the end, and that's part of what you need to learn, part of how you're going to evolve within that life. So, not everybody has afflictions in the beginning, not everyone has afflictions in the middle, but everything is what you are choosing with your contract. So, what would you say to someone who is? in desperation wanting to get better desperation is not a most positive but understandable state Mm -hmm. 
and it is a place let us the more that your mind pulls you into desperation mm -hmm. we're going to be frank the higher it is for us to reach you when you are a say teenage angst and you are in the midst of despair mm -hmm. it is very hard for us to to because your energy is at such a low vibration we can get to you we will if we need to to reach down which is why we keep saying vibration vibration bring yourself up is like the scale abraham hicks says it. Mm -hmm. the scale of hopelessness of desperation and that is that is where you're at you have to gradually shift for us to help you and the the more that you can gradually change your desperation to i'm really not happy to this really is horrible to just lightening your vibration the more that you can leave with your tools that dark area of your desperation the more that we can come and and greet you and 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 pull you help you but it's like we we have that whole spectrum of human vibration of course if you're on the upper end and you're vibrating and you're choosing to do healthy lifestyles and healthy meditation and service that saying and grounding yourself it's much easier for you to connect with us and as you go down the scale of desperation and darkness and lower vibration it is harder for us to and we will to reach and pull you up so even if you can just hum or chant or breathe or ground yourself or plant flowers or talk to mother earth anything any small thing that you can do to start bringing yourself out of that depths of despair because that is as abraham hicks has said that is way over in a dense area it doesn't mean you can't change it it doesn't mean you can't change your vibration it doesn't mean you can't eventually get up to the vortex it just means you're out in the middle of the woods and you're wailing and screaming why am i out in the middle of the woods when we're like in the in the beginning part saying with our light saying come can you see us we're holding our lights we're holding our lanterns we're trying to get into you but as you continue to sit and and mire yourself into a log you know we are trying to get to you it's it's how and we understand you understand there are depths of despair there are desperations there are the dark times there are the dark nights of the soul mm -hmm. you know and sometimes you can't see us standing there with a the light saying you know we're here open up your life walk if you it's this way just come start coming toward us just start you know every step you make away from the desperation away from away from that hold Mm -hmm. why is it that sometimes when people go on the spiritual path they awaken they lose everything they lose their house they lose their car they lose their job they lose their spouse maybe even their children why does that happen well let's go back to the bible and the when uh there was a man that was had everything and the devil and God we're talking about, and I know this is old schools, but bear with me, <laughs> um, about, you know, who he would, you know, go for, if he would go for the devil or for God, and they took away everything. They literally took away everything to see him lose his faith. Now, I'm going to say to everything, faith is easy to have if you have everything. If you start losing your wife and losing everything that's important, and everything that makes your heart beat, and everything that's part of your breath, and you lose everything and you're left with literally nothing you're right there in the middle of nothing the temptation the darkness is right there and the light and the vibration which is within your breath is right there 
You are literally without everything but your breath. Everything has been taken away from you. What do you have? You have nothing. But you have in that moment of acknowledging that you have nothing. You have everything. That is the bravest soul, the one that allows everything to be taken away from them, to have that nothing and realize that in that moment of nothingness, you have everything. It's not an easy thing to feel, but in the midst of nothingness, when you have nothing, when you are nothing, when there is nothing at that moment, when you acknowledge that everything has left you, that is a moment when you have everything. And if you can let it go, and I know this isn't easy, and I'm not saying it is easy, but if you let it go and sit in that moment, that's when you've hurt people and, I've, and, it's, and it's happened. That's when you have the epiphany of everything is here. Everything is now. And it's a brave soul that goes down that path to having everything taken away, to take that chance of having that moment of recognizing that everything is actually there. It's a hard road. Especially when you have to feed your children. Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And we've seen and we acknowledge people that have been sitting on their floor and crying and they have nothing to give. What do you do then? We are there. We are there. We would hold you in our arms and say, this is just, this is just now. We feel you. We would pull you into our heart and hold you. We feel your pain and we love you so much. And we would give you everything. And we are so sorry you are in that place you are in. And we are literally there with you. We are there. We are within your pain. Jesus, I have a question about those that have questions about reincarnation, the light, angels. I have to get up and release again. All right. Can we continue on that path? Yes. Thank you. Eyes open. Okay. That, that was deep. Past lives. Mm -hmm. Past lives, reincarnation, false light. Tell me what that's all about. Oh, we have to start. 
not everyone, as you've seen, has been on this planet. Mm -hmm. There are those that directly come to heal, to help, and there will be more continuing to come to heal, to help, that do not have reincarnation, that do not have past lives. Mm -hmm. So this is part of the equation is not everyone has been here since the dawn of time and people and races have come and gone within this planet so there will be spirits that come that have no past lives because they are not here for that they are here as first aid assistants. Mm -hmm. Think of Mother Earth as someone that needs first aid and the planets around are sending their first aid. Mm -hmm. So there will be many light workers that come from other planets that have no reincarnation and there are souls that have some and there are souls that have many so that's a relative question some people don't want to be here mm -hmm. no one's going to make you come here you may feel like you were sent to your room but nobody's forced to come here mm -hmm. what did you want to know about reincarnation well a lot of people have the idea that when we go to the light that it's a trap. <laughs> oh, it's like when you have a Thanksgiving feast and there's a table full of food and someone says, if you sit down, you're not going to get eaten anything. It's you know, it's an illusion. Mm -hmm. Yes, I could see where people say, yes, you sit down on Thanksgiving dinner, it's all an illusion and you're not really eating anything anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there are, there are people that really do feel like going to the light is an illusion. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest, there are entities that when they pass or their body ends, they don't go to the light. Mm -hmm. They stay. So there are people that don't go to the light, that don't see the light. They make a left turn, so to speak. Mm -hmm. There are many that go to the light. But once again, remember there are many races here. There are many planets here. There are many vibration elements that are not even physical. Mm -hmm. So if you have someone that is a non-physical manifestation that comes into the physical world when they leave this body they do go into the non-physical manifestation of their essence mm -hmm. many of the spirits that come here do go through their councils you gotta it's like we go to where our heart is some people go to councils some people go to light beings some people and just go to one spirit guide. Mm -hmm. There are as many varied experiences of the light as there are births, as there are deaths, as there are reincarnations themselves. Mm -hmm. Everyone, when they pass, doesn't experience heaven the same way. Mm -hmm. There are a whole bunch of different religions, and everyone has a different experience of light. Mm -hmm. So reincarnation or death itself is varied. Some people literally close their eyes, breathe out, and they're gone. Mm -hmm. So some people see the light, some people don't. Some people don't need the light. Some people are just peace out. Mm -hmm. So what do we do with these beings that are trapped here? I spent a lot of time with them. <sighs> yeah. Why is that happening? Has that always happened? Let's say when you landed on Earth, mm -hmm. since you did, 
say when you land on an earth, it's a lot like going into the ocean where there's a lot of sand. Mm -hmm. So let's just say you fell onto earth and it was a lot like hitting the ocean bottom. You hit the sand, the sand billowed up and you lost your clarity because you are completely surrounded by your feet hitting the ocean and the sand billowing up and you not seeing anything or being aware of anything or having the clarity or even of knowing where your home base is because you're in the middle of an ocean. So you've hit the bottom, the sand's billowing up, you can't see anything. Childhood, hopefully, is a time when many people can see beyond the veil, but they can also allow themselves to see the sand settling. So you take a period of time when the sand actually settles around your arrival here mm -hmm. and you can see clear and you can see where you are and you can see where you are in the ocean and you have a great deal of perspective and depth and clarity. So, there are many other people in this ocean along with you. Some people are dropped from other planets and some people are just waded in from the shore. You have a whole bunch of spirits and entities. Some people, I'm going to tell you, they're going to be over there in the shallow and stopping their feet trying to make the water as muddy as they can because they don't have the patience to stop and let the water clear. And some people, we're going to be honest, are going to be hurt or cut in the water. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you are hurt or cut in the water or damaged is you have sharks or other creatures that are swimming in the water. Mm -hmm. So when you have that moment of being hurt or damaged, or say you're in the midst of a bunch of people stomping around and you're not stomping around, but a whole bunch of people are stomping around and you're feeling extreme distress. This is when what we'll call the other creatures, entities that are swimming in the ocean that have no idea that they can stop. They can find that spark of light that they can move on. They've become, they've identified, they have become that shark, they have become that piranha, they have become that electric eel, they've lost their spark, they've lost their identity, they lost their source, they think they're a shark, and for the all good sense and purposes, they are a shark. And so when someone is damaged or hurt or open to this other identity, Klingon that draws them in, which is why you have heard over and over to have protection, mm -hmm. to have meditation, to be able to use that clarity. Once you have that clarity, once you are standing and the sand has settled and you have your clarity and your protection, they don't come around you. Now, people come to you and they've been, goodness, some people have a whole boatload of barnacles on them, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And all you can do is clear them away, put the protection, say, look, don't be stomping in the water, stay away from all the people that are splashing, bringing sharks. It literally is like an ocean. Mm -hmm. The spirits have lost their identity. They've lost their spark. They think they're something and you've run into this other than what they are. They are all, even a shark has the spirit of the creator in it. Mm -hmm. Even piranhas have the essence of vibration of the creator. They have just forgotten. So they attach or they are munching on or they are living on or they are become part of even more forgetting who they are. The person who is hurt or is damaged or is in the middle of the stomping around. So when they get the call from the angels to please come in, please come to, you know, get debarnacled or de-sharked, 
You know, they really do have these entities and will just, they've forgotten what they are and they've associated their entity, their form with something that is in the, out there in the ocean mm -hmm. that's floating around. And it's really not more any simple or difficult than that. And there's a lot of fish, sharks and piranhas and everything out there in the ocean. And there it's, the people have been not going to the light since the beginning of time. They've forgotten. And now that it's the time for the shift and it really the vibration's changing, more and more people are coming with these barnacles, with the sharks, with the little piranhas nibbling on their arms and hands and all over them mm -hmm. to remove them. So the piranhas and the sharks and all the creatures of the ocean that forgot can remember and go back up. And unfortunately, there's a lot of creatures, a lot of creatures out in the ocean that are swimming around. Mm -hmm. And they do get called by hurt or damaged beings. So how does a person do this on their own? If it's just... A little minnow. <laughs> That's pretty easy to, you know, clear yourself and, and let the sand get cleared and go away from the splashers and, and let the water clear and say, oh, look, I have some little minnows. Flick, flick. If you have some piranhas that have a grip on you, then you are going to need, just like people in the church used to go and try and save people, you're going to need help. So yes, it depends on the attachment. If they've just started, if they've been with you from a past life, if you've called for help, not asking for the highest light, if you just go, you know, I need help with the situation, and mm -hmm. they're like, I'm here. <laughs> I can defend you. And they really think that they're defending or helping you. Yeah, they do. You know, the they got some kind of, you know, jellyfish that's around there helping them and keeping everybody away. There's... It's just what is attached, how many are attached, how serious is attachment, is, you know, is it embedded? You know, there's, there's some that are just hanging around that you can shake off and deal with yourself. If you can go into a vibrational state, and this is a real good a test, so you're going to allow a half hour. We're not going to do three breaths because this is what's going to tell you how much is hanging and how serious it is, is how deep you can go into the source yourself. So you're going to go ahead and I don't care whether you look at a candle. I don't want doing the guided meditation because you don't want anybody else there but you. I don't care if I look at a tree. I don't care if you're, um, out sitting cross-legged if, if you're sitting on your bed, but the telltale for what's attached to you is if it lets you get into a deep meditative state. Because if it's holding on to you, it's going to be very hard, if that makes any sense, for you to get into a deep med meditative state because they're not going to want to, quote unquote, lose their grip on you. Mm -hmm. And if you can change your vibration, if you can go into a deeper state, if you don't have little entities going, wait, wait, come back. Mm -hmm. That is the easiest way to tell, is to slow your breath, deepen your breath, Consciously and with intention, deepen, slow, feel the spark in your heart, allow your breath to slow, allow your breath to deepen, focus on your heart spark, and as you've said, there is a spark of Creator in each one of us, focus on that light, focus on that spark, make it bigger, expand it. Expand it out and beyond yourself. If you can do this, no problem, no problem slowing breath, no problem, you know, connecting with the source, no problem expanding out, 
if there's some little minnows hanging on and you just throw that light out, they can't get a hold. You'll know as you expand your light outward if there feels like there's a clog in your pipes. But it is the easier it is for you to go deep and find your spark and find your creator and find that contact. That will that's your barometer right there. Wonderful. Now before we started this session, you said that you had an entourage of people around you. They were all here. Um, the host. What was what was what uh, she said? She said there was a bunch that wanted to speak. They've come in and out. They have. There are ETs, mm -hmm. which I am not familiar with these ETs. Mm -hmm. The white ones, mm -hmm. I can see them. Why are they here? I'm going to stand and listen to them because I don't want them coming with them. There's different varieties. There are some. Okay. There are some that are here to completely assist with debarnacling. I wasn't aware. The, the spirit here is not aware of the entities, mm -hmm. so this is new. The debarnacling, the ETs have different levels of technical abilities, of vibrational abilities. We recommend you go through the angels. And if the angels want to incorporate an ET into debarnacling you, they are different technologies, different civilizations. Hmm. So they are here to assist with the removal and sending to the light, which is why we are recommending angels are there. Mm -hmm. Because if you are going to remove an entity with the help of the ETs, we are requesting that the angels are there so that they do take them to the light. Removal of entities without angels, they can just find someone else to host. Mm -hmm. So we would request if you are using the angels and meditating in the ET is, we you know, there for assistance, they can. There are different body sizes and head sizes. They say they are commonly known by the tall whites. Hmm. Are these ETs benevolent? Some are, some aren't. Mm. Which is why we say do not go anywhere near ETs without the angels because the angels are your protection. Okay. And if they are removing anything, you want to make sure they're doing it in a protected manner. Mm -hmm. Now, I always use the angels of the white light to um, kind of push them along. And I always use Archangel Michael to escort them to the light. Is that the proper way? That's protocol. Okay. Archangel Michael is the guardian. Mm -hmm. So anytime you do deal with entities, I want Michael on my back. Mm -hmm. He's can be as quiet and loving, but he can also become extremely powerful and motivational 
to the entities. Mm. He does not brook any foolishness. He is there for protection. Okay. So I myself am always believe in using the light mm -hmm. in anything. But what I am seeing from the uh, ETs is that they do have their own kind hmm. on earth that are there for observation. Mm -hmm. And they are a little distressed that the entities, because of the innocence and the openness of the ETs, because they were unaware that this is basically an ocean full of entities. Mm. Um, that they are more susceptible to the entity attacks. So this is really more for the ETs and the observational beings and the different vibrational beings that really don't feel like they belong on here. They are observational from other races. Okay. Um, I know of one person in particular who um, is here with the ETs, I guess the ETs have been observing this person for a while, and they were on their psychic attack. Um, can you can you tell me a little bit about that? Is that something that the angels help them, or ETs I literally help them? see like you know how Mother Earth has a uh, ozone holes. Mm -hmm. This person literally has ozone holes in the protection around them. Okay. So what can that person do if they've been under this attack? Do they build up that their aura again? How do they build that up again? Okay. Well, <clears throat> what I am sensing mm -hmm. is I believe Imodo mm -hmm. has blessings in water. Yes. And this is the beginning to have water that is by another person since this person is under attack mm -hmm. is to have water that is love infused mm -hmm. and this needs to be part of their daily routine the water actually is the beginning because the water is the essence of the person as far as body. Mm -hmm. And if you want to change the physical structure going out to the holes, you need to start with some very strong love infused water. Mm -hmm. If they want to read on Emoto and water and actually, interesting. I'm seeing some type of magnetic bracelets mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. and this interacts with the water i'm not sure what's going on i'm just relaying it okay there's some magnetic bracelets on both hands and the love infused water and the magnetic vibration from the bracelet like accelerates the love infused water And do the ETs that work with this being that they've been observing, do they help with the healing of this person? Or does the person also get assistance from the angels? I am strongly recommending the angels. Okay. The angels need to be the front line. Mm -hmm. There needs to be healing and the ETs do not have the frequency of human healing that the angels have. The angels have been working with human bodies. Not that the ETs haven't, but if we're looking for spiritual healing mm -hmm. and protection. I'm seeing the feet too. What's going on with the feet? I'm literally feeling throbbing at the bottom of the feet. Mm -hmm. Is this some sort of grounding? No. Mm. 
No, it's influence from the ETs. Okay. <clears throat> All entities enter from portals, whether it's the ears, um, the mouth, the hands, the feet, mm -hmm. any energy portals are where the entities you come in from. Mm -hmm. Is that why some people get them from sex too? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Any, any portal. Okay. You know, that's a, any energy exchange, okay. feet, hands, any energy exchange. Mm -hmm. That's why some cultures are very guarded about the top of the head. Ah, oh, okay. There needs to be healing on the bottom of the feet. There's some type of flower, oil, healing flower oil, mm -hmm. a company that makes flower oil for healing and protection. Mm -hmm. Would black tourmaline help? Between the toes. Between the toes. Well, I have some pretty big chunks. I don't think they'd fit between All right. my toes. <laughs> I'm seeing more smaller. Smaller pieces? So, so that it stays. Okay. And what would you do with the, like, do you wear it at night with socks or something? If you would want to use that, you mm -hmm. would put, for night, you would put one at the bottom of the bed and one at the top of the bed. Okay. So that way you're guarding the bottom where the feet and the energies come in and the top of the head where the energies come in. Those are the two protections, is at the bottom of the feet and the top. The only reason I would say the toes is sometimes there's very small ground particles mm -hmm. and that almost like dust and that would be for between the toes. Hmm. Okay. But typically bottom of bed, top of bed. Is this on a, on a daily basis? Or Many when? people that are under spirit attack yes. use it under the bed, bottom of the bed, top of bed. Okay. And what is this uh, oil, that, this flower oil? It's a, there's a remedy flower oil. Essence. There's a flower essence oil. That is for fear, protection against fear. Mm-hmm. I would say, because I'm not seeing the name, to look it up, but there is a flower protection oil that is a essence, mm -hmm. and it is to combat fear, and that what you put a drop on the inner part, just on the bottom in the middle of the foot. Okay. But the flower essence, there are many of them that are oils that some people do take in orally, but I would recommend for anyone that is in fear to check into the, because that is natural, into the flower essence. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully someone will know what that is and can assist us with that, who's an expert at that, too. Do you have any other information for us today? I'd like to meet up with you again sometime, but anything else that you would like to say? Yes. There are people that are wanting to connect with Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. So what we are sensing from the trees is because the trees do communicate most effectively with Mother Earth and with each other. And they are the communicators of the ground. Mm -hmm. For the people that are wanting the connection what we are suggesting for their benefit and they will find it to be conductive is to dig a small hole at the base of a tree that has given you permission you'll know for not if the tree wants you to dig there dig at the base of the tree big enough for your feet to rest in amongst the roots of the tree mm -hmm. okay. So you're digging a hole and placing your feet, your feet, which are your receptors, to the bottom and into the soil of the tree, which are the tree's communicators, our receptors with Mother Earth. Mm 
So you're going to go ahead and place that in there and just gently shift around until you feel your feet begin to tingle or feel a vibrational change in your feet. Some people may not be aware of it and you could just place your feet in amongst the roots of the tree. So go ahead and place your feet in there by the roots and literally allow your feet to connect with the roots of the tree, which is a very direct connection to Gaia. And just do a small, quiet, you can, don't have to be meditation, but there are a lot of people that wanting to heal Gaia, to wanting to send Gaia energy. Trees are Mother Gaia's communication network. Mm -hmm. They're a great network and they are a very benevolent vibrational being. Mm -hmm. They are alive and they work with Gaia. So our suggestion for the people that are wanting to work and heal Gaia, go ahead and put your feet in with the roots and ask for permission of the trees first because trees are living creations. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will directly help communication with Gaia. Wonderful. Anything else that you would like to say for Carol, for the world, for me? The most important thing is we are going into the pendulum swing. The balance will be not comfortable. Please, for your own balance, Get your sanity, your space, your breath, your san sanctuary so that when the unbalance goes, that you're right there. Mm -hmm. Do not be afraid. Just establish it. Establish your sanctuary so that when something happens, you are there. You don't need to be thrown off. You don't need to feel unbalance. Show your own by showing your vibration in a manner that stays balanced you will help everyone around you mm -hmm. so I would say by keeping your balance you help more than you know the people around you that are unbalanced but it's a daily job mm -hmm. it's not easy it's every day do we have a timeline for this pendulum swing? <sighs> it's like I'm looking over the ocean and I see the clouds rolling in. And they're still growing. So it is not time. They are off in the distance, but the winds here the wind of change is here and it's really knocking some people off their feet but those dark clouds are still off the shore so I want everyone to be anchored in mm -hmm. guess that's my word please anchor in because you will not need to be unbalanced like you've heard you do not have to go through unbalance you do not have to go through fear get your sanctuary get your balance and you'll be fine mm -hmm. you will be the more people that balance that maintain that balance, the more that we are anchored in. And remember, you're not alone. Wonderful. And don't forget to sing every day. Don't care if it's DMX or Denver. Take your pick. Thank you. Do you have any, any information for Carol today? She is going to change again as we need her to shift. We always ask permission before we change her but she will be changing more. But we do not do it without permission. Mm -hmm. So the change is coming, but it will be gradual. Would you allow us to work again together? Yes, because it's going to get worse before better. Mm -hmm. And I will wait for you to send me non-verbal, <laughs> and I'll let her know when you're ready. Wonderful. Anything else that you would like to say today? Just that your gang is pleased that they're being acknowledged. I give them high fives after every session.
Thank you very much. Welcome back. What a ride, huh? Saw stuff I hadn't seen before. Hmm, what did you see? The planet had so many creatures. It's like Star Wars. Really? Describe it for me. What does it look like? Our planet you're talking about? No, when you... Because I... You went to the Pleiades. Yeah. For some reason, mm -hmm. that's where they were all hanging out. Okay. It was... There was so many life forms. Hmm. Did they seem benevolent to you? Yeah, some of them weren't mm -hmm. spiritual. They are more... technical or there's a s different civilization orientation so I guess is different way mm -hmm. of putting it. How does your body feel? Well it was hard because I, I, I had a hard time getting my ego out. Mm -hmm. But you did it. <sighs> I felt other presences. In what way? It was literally like there were other presences in the room, but I wasn't in the room. Mm -hmm. It was like I wasn't here and there was... and. It's like I was aware, like they were like background singers over there. <laughs> and they were like really rowdy. Really? Yeah. It was seemed like there were so many vibrational beings that wanted to talk and, and it was like it was like, wait a minute. Just don't <laughs> rush the stage. Mm -hmm. It was just it was so different. It was like I was here, but I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. But the nice thing is that there was no peanut gallery. Ah, so your ego was totally out of the way. Well, when Jesus, before when Jesus was speaking, it was like chunks. He could only like give me a chunk. He would like do a paragraph. Mm -hmm. And then part of me was like, well, I don't talk like that. And then yeah. he would like have to put another paragraph in before my, I made another comment. And this time it was like, he was sitting down in a chair talking to you. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Wow. <laughs> I feel really numb. I mean, it's not unpleasant. It's yeah. just numb. So tell me what you remember. The biggest thing is I heard heal and release, and my God, it was, that's really powerful. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use that unless you want to. I'm on so you had to get up to the, go to the bathroom twice. It was just, I don't know what it was, but those words just like. And he kept saying it over and over again. <laughs> over and over. So how do you feel? How does your body feel? I, it's funny, I feel like... Well, I'm, I'm trembling all over and very numb, but it's like I still have this essence that there's parts. To, he's still kind of saying, I feel him still there saying, uh -huh. it's going to be okay. It's really going to be okay. You know, and, and 
And he, I could feel his concern. Mm-hmm. I could feel a concern that just because of the unbalance that mm-hmm. everyone didn't have to go for the ride. And I, I don't know if that was his main saying, but I just really feel, you know, just because, you know, this is going on, you don't have to be unbalanced with it. And, yeah. And it was just, I really feel that, that sense of, of parental or, or teacher, you know, just, it's, it's going to be okay. Yeah. You have to be centered. You have to be grounded. When things are happening, it, you shouldn't be like chicken little with... You know, yeah. And you don't wait to the end to say, oh, well, I'm going to start meditating now. Right. You need to, you need to really be doing this time. now. All the time. Yeah. And, and in the last session that we had with you, he, are, he taught you, he taught everybody how to do the breath. Um, so really, you don't have to sit and meditate for hours and right. hours. Right. It's basically just taking three breaths. It's doing it every day. Yeah. Just finding a moment to just center yourself and do it every day. You can do it in the shower. You can do it in the bathtub. You can do it in your car before you go to work. I mean, really, there's no place that you really can't do this. And what's really interesting is at the end when he was talking about digging your feet into the ground. Do you recall that? I feel so numb. (laughs) (laughs) I feel so numb. I'm like, I I feel like I was a passenger in a car. (laughs) Do you remember any of that? I... I remember his presence. Yeah. But you don't remember what he talked about? I remember I remember waking up and having tears run down my face. Yeah. Yeah. He was getting very emotional. Yeah. Big heart. You felt his heart. I re- I just have a sensation of him just, it's going to be okay, but I really want you to make sure that this isn't something you do. Last minute. Yeah, it's not no last minute packing. <laughs> you you have to like be prepared now. Get yourself. It, it almost reminds me of um, you know when we prepare. We're in, we're in Florida right now. When we prepare for a hurricane, okay? You know the hurricane is coming. People have already warned you. But before the hurricanes come, Floridians and other places already know that you have to have your supplies ready. Okay, so that when the storm comes, you're not running around going, oh, my God, what do I do now? So really what he's saying is get yourself centered now. Get yourself meditating now. There's nothing for you to do except anchor yourself down. It's all going to be okay. Really, that's really the sense of it. Don't be running around. Oh, my God, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, do it from now. I mean, start meditating now. Feel at peace now. Make your peace with people. Do forgiveness yeah. work. Understand that we're all in this together. We all we all chose to be here at this time for a purpose, and just start getting that love out there. You know, love one another. This he talked at length about service. You know, being of service to people. Just be nice to people when you're when you walk into a store. Say good morning to people. It brightens up their day. Your smile will brighten up people. So if everybody starts doing little tiny things like this, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Sounds like the Truman Show. But <laughs> you have to at least be pleasant. And when we all start being pleasant, we're being nice, we truly love one another, this changes everything. It felt everything. different though this time. It was very different. He was really in control. I mean... It really felt in control. different. Really it really control. did. I mean, he had a, he had things he wanted to talk about. It felt different. I mean, <laughs> well, we didn't go any past lives. <laughs> no, I mean, but, yeah. I mean, because the uh, the first time he just like was joking and kidding, and it's yeah. all good and it's all happy, and this time it's just like you know, he was in teacher mode. Yeah. Well, he he came in on the staircase. You know, he came in. Walking in in a state of from heaven. I remember that thinking, what is he doing? Yeah, he just wanted to make you laugh. But then he, he went into teacher mode. And his stories are amazing. And, and I'm thinking, can you imagine when he was alive and sitting there listening to him with these stories? It must have been great because I was imagining all these sharks going around 
he's talking about entities, almost like sharks. He's smirking. You know, sharks and, and piranhas, and you can really get it. When he tells a story, you really get it. It really makes you understand. Yeah, when you're hurt, the, the story was, if you, don't, if you don't remember this, when someone is in an ocean and they get hurt, let's say they start bleeding, well, there's sharks and other animals that will, will prey on you when you're in distress. And that's what happens when we attract entities. When we're in distress, we're not all there. You know, we don't have our immunity up. All of these sharks will come. It doesn't it make sense? So you have to put your protection up. You put, you know, you do your white light. It's really cool. You know, he great story. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to do this again. I'm I'm okay with it. It's just feel that feels different than it. I guess because yes. he was here. Yes. Yeah. And he wanted this session. And he told me, you know, when you put out your signal, I'll be there. So I'll let you guys communicate. So we I'm got not, another date sometime. Yeah. Well, I it's, it was interesting for me because he started it yeah. long before the session. Yeah. But like I said, I was okay with it because he's very careful about asking. Mm-hmm. So well, that's free will. Yeah. They can't so I'm it. I'm okay with it. He was very gentle. I just feel like. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? <laughs> well, to everybody out there, I hope you enjoyed the session. It was really wonderful for me, and uh, to watch you know, when you watch it, you'll 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 understand. And I hope that uh, you enjoyed it. You learned a lot from it. Uh, understand that we are all in this together. We are all one. We can help the earth. This is a time of transition. It's a time for us all to be uh, part of this. Work as hard as we can to be at peace to be loving to one another, to be of service to one another, and we can make this a really beautiful place to be. Thank you for watching, and I hope I get to see you sometime soon. Bye! Now give me that hug.